Hello and welcome to another video where this time we're going to be turning the clock right back to a technique that I first did when it was basically when I started digital imaging and that effect went on to become known as the Hayes Island effect but this time we're going to be bringing it up to date. I'll put a link below this video so you can check out the original Hayes Island effect as well. The first thing we need to do is to duplicate the background layer twice. So I'm going to use Command J or Control J. That's Command J, Control J once and Command J, Control J again. There are our two copies. Now to the top layer where it says layer one copy, I'm going to double click. That's now highlighted. We're going to call this what it's going to be, which is sketch. We're going to apply a sketch effect to this layer. Now for the sketch effect, we're going to go to filter. We're going to come down to sketch. That's a good start. And we're going to come across to graphic novel. And when graphic novel opens, the default tends to be painted gray. We're going to use twisted plot. Now with twisted plot, let's come down to this icon here. We're going to click on it, which is going to show it at 100%. Bringing my cursor up, I've got the hand tool. I'm going to click down. We're going to lift it up into this region here. There would be pretty good. Right, darkness, just a little bit too much black for my liking. So I'm going to take it down slightly. I'm going to bring my cursor out, I'm going to place it on the line, I'm going to click down. Let's take it down a touch more. There, that looks really good. Lifting it up just a little bit more into this region. Right, the clean look is set on eight. I'm going to bring my cursor down to this position here. This time I need to click on it. Thank you. Dropping it down to that region. Let's try again. And the more you drop it down, the more lines you get in your picture. That looks pretty good. We're going to use this one. It's uh, 4.58. Right, contrast set on 10. That's quite high. Let's drop this right down into that area. And you can see if I go down a little bit further, I just noticed this area here becoming a little less black. Edge thickness 0 0.96, quite like it as it is. So I'm not going to adjust this. Smoothness, apply smoothness to enhance the final effect. Looks like we get two goes at this as well. I'm gonna click on add and there it is. Looks like it thickens those edges. Clicking on add again. And I think we've thickened it even more we're now using a softer pencil for our sketch. I'm going to clear it. I actually quite like that uh, yeah, thinner look that we've got with the original. Clicking on OK is now going to render this. May take a little bit of time, but it's uh, shooting across quite nicely there. So we'll just wait a second until finally there it is. We're going to zoom in to 100%. Now I've got the hand tool so I can right click and I can go to actual pixels. Now, if you've got a different tool from the toolbox, all you need to do is press and hold down command on a Mac. That's control on the PC. Now press number one and you go straight to 100%. Looking at the image, that sketch effects working really well. What we're now going to do so we can see the layer underneath layer one is we're going to change the blend mode from normal. We're going to come down to soft lights and just using that background copy gives a really nice paint to the effect. But we're going to change layer one. We're going to come to filter, filter gallery. When filter gallery opens, we're going to go to artistic. We're going to go to cutout. And when cutout has rendered itself, there it is. I'm going to right click. You get the, the hand tool. I'm going to right click. We're going to go to 100%. Always a good idea to look at it at full size there so you can see exactly how the filter is going to work. Right, number of levels set on seven. Let's try it on six and nope, go back up to seven. In fact, let's take it to eight, see how that's going to work. Looks pretty good like that. Just moving it across into this area here as well. Edge simplicity five, let's take it down to four. See what that's going to do. I'm going to take this down to seven there. There was a little bit here that I wasn't too keen on. So I'm using that back down at seven, four. Looks good like this. Edge fidelity three, let's try two. Yeah, quite like two with this. Again, just move our way around the picture. See how that looks. Uh, edge simplicity taking it, no. Five, nope. Four, yeah, try four. How about three? Just the final, yeah, three, definitely three. No, I'm not so sure I like it with. 
and it's this area here this is what I'm trying to remove three seems to do the trick with that so let's click OK right and there it is with the image and as we look around this looks pretty good colors look a little bit uh, lackluster but we can change that by coming up to an adjustment layer and we're going to go to hue saturation saturation slider we're going to take this up I'm going to take it into not quite that area let's drop it back a little bit into there 44 looks pretty good right let's close that down out of the way something else we've got some rather plain areas here you can see just solid color the same as we got solid color in patches here here and around this area texture that'd be a good idea we're going to go to a new empty layer because i don't want to apply texture to this layer in fact let's just rename this while we're at it i'm going to call this what it is which is cut out now it doesn't matter where you apply your texture layer it can be above the hue saturation it can be below it as we've got here we're going to put in a new empty layer in that goes renaming this so we know what is on this layer texture first thing we need to do is to go to edit fill layer and fill layer use a bit of a clue from the flyout menu we're going to choose 50% gray and we're going to click on OK heading up to filter coming down to filter gallery and when filter gallery opens we're going to come down to texture we're going to go to texturizer now I'm using I've got sandstone we've got scaling 200% we've got relief set on 10 let's just drop this back down for a moment I've got a feeling the default is 114 I think for some reason that springs to mind and if we just go to canvas with canvas you'll notice the way you've got these lines here it's almost like a repeat pattern now if you take the scaling up what you're doing is you're stretching out your canvas and that repeat pattern becomes a little less noticeable now that's with canvas I'm going to use sandstone with sandstone I've got the relief on 10 that looks pretty good lighting is from the top always better to slightly overdo the texture and I'll show you why in just a moment when we click on OK there it is we've come back and you can see the texture there looks pretty hard in fact you could probably strike a match on that but what we're going to do is we're going to change the blend mode so we can see the cutout layer underneath and once again we're going to go to soft lights as soon as we click on soft lights you'll notice the way that texture fades down a little bit looking around the image looking around this area here in particular I just want to take this texture down further and we can do that by coming to the opacity slider and we can reduce it down now you can see why you can overdo it you can reduce it down if you've underdone it you may need to reapply it so I'm just going to take it into this position here just like the texture it's adding to this area here and down on the grass as well that looks pretty good like that right let's zoom out to fit on screen which is command zero and control zero so there it is next we're going to add a vignette to the image so we need to click on the top layer of the layer stack heading over to the toolbox we're going to pick up the marquee tool go down to tool options make sure you've got the rectangular marquee tool that's this one here i've also got the new selection click on this if you haven't we're now going to fold this down out of the way coming into the image I'm going to click down I'm going to drag it out over this area here that looks pretty good like that now because we've got the new selection you get that little rectangle with a flag on the top that means you can click down you can move it around but we can adjust the vignette once we've applied it and I'll show you that in just a moment next we need to head up to an adjustment layer we're going to come down to hue saturation now the first thing we need to do is invert this mask why because where we've got the black this will hide the effect and the effect will be revealed where we've got the white so to invert it press and hold down command on a Mac that's control on the PC now press the letter I there it is we've inverted the mask heading down to the lightness slider as we move this over you can see it brightening up on the outside we're adding a light vignette with this going to take it to this area here and you can see it's where the white is on the mask that's where we are showing our vignette bit of a hard edge filter blur Gaussian blur will fix that and there looks pretty good 
clicking on the edge of the mask you can see it's uh, there's the before there's the after I've got the radius set on 22.2 let's just go back to the start and the more you increase it the more you're going to feather it by where it was was pretty good 22.2 I like that let's click OK in fact I'm going to take the lightness up just a touch more into this area here now I mentioned we can adjust the vignette once we've applied it to do that go to image transform free transform that has now put a transform tool around the mask I'm going to bring it in from this side so I'm going to click down across we go bring it in from the bottom slightly to that area there I'm going to leave it on this side because we've got these people here and if I click down on the top just taking it down very slightly bring my cursor inside double click that is going to apply that and there it is job done let's close this down out of the way as well I've got the uh, yeah I thought I still had the marquee tool I'm going to press H to give me back the hand tool we're going to zoom in to 100% let's have a good look around so use command one or control one and you go to 100% now with the hand tool I could just move our way around one thing I'm not too keen on is this area of red we're going to go down to the cutout layer we're going to put in a layer mask coming over to the toolbox we're going to pick a paintbrush black is the foreground color just what we want down to tool options I've got a yeah soft edge brush it is 87 pixels just going to use the left hand square bracket make it a little bit smaller 50 pixels that looks good opacity set to 100% we can now click down around here and that's just removing that little bit of red that was just coming out into the image looking around the rest of the picture that looks good perhaps just removing that little trace of blue from this area there that looks much better pressing H once again to give me back my hand tool as we look around the image great stuff that will do nicely using command zero control zero to go out to fit on screen he says you could tell the concentration <laughs> I was just looking to see if there's anything else I wanted to adjust I think I'm just going to come back up to our mask I'm going to use command T control T for that transform tool just going to take it out a touch on that side double clicking to apply that looks better just balancing out a little bit more there is our finished image go on give it a try just going to press tab on the keyboard command zero to control zero to open the whole thing up I hope you've enjoyed the video give it the thumbs up if you have don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come but until the next time it is happy imaging and take care